Teofimo Lopez has shown to struggle against southpaws, and this was capitalized on by Jermaine Ortiz, who nearly upset Lopez by boxing out of the southpaw stance. From there, Ortiz followed a game plan that aimed to take away Lopez's best strengths and also exploit his weaknesses. One thing Lopez does is hold his lead hand low, even against southpaws, and this makes him reluctant to engage in hand fighting. The problem is, instead of hand fighting to work his way into an advantageous position to punch, he instead resorts to lunging in with punches in an attempt to bypass his opponent's lead hand. Even worse, even when there is no lead hand fighting started by his opponent, Lopez still tries to close the distance by lunging with punches. Jermaine Ortiz baited out these lunges by keeping his distance, waiting for Lopez to get impatient, and then lunge at him. This opened up counterpunching opportunities for Ortiz. You see as Lopez comes forward, Ortiz steps back and walks him into this check hook. By stepping back whenever Lopez would load up an attack, Ortiz would make Lopez reach with his punch, leaving him off balance and open to be countered. Lopez also loads up before exploding into his punches, and this gives Jermaine Ortiz the cue to either step away or step laterally to avoid the punch from Lopez. And of course, after he makes a miss, he makes him pay. The thing is, Ortiz didn't only use Lopez's lunges to set up counters, but he also exploited Lopez's habit of lunging with punches when his opponent is on the ropes. You see, since Ortiz's game plan was to constantly move around to frustrate Lopez, it's only natural that he would find himself in the corner or along the ropes often. But since he knew Lopez would try to explode with lunging punches as soon as he touched the ropes, Ortiz would avoid the attack and then escape out while Lopez is recovering his balance. So we see Ortiz is backing himself pretty close to the corner here, which is a good position for Lopez. You see here Lopez could ideally work his way into punching range, so he could set up an attack with Ortiz having limited space to escape. However, Ortiz knows Lopez will get impatient and lunge at him, so when Lopez does lunge with a jab, Ortiz simply takes another step back to make the punch miss, and he circles out while Lopez is regathering himself. And we're going to see the same thing in these examples. Ortiz backs himself to the ropes, then Lopez immediately tries to lunge at him from far away. Ortiz moves away to make the punch miss, then he circles out to safety. You see, when Lopez lunges at Ortiz from far away, it's much too easy for Ortiz to see the punch coming and avoid it. Ideally, it is advised to set up your attacks with some sort of control when your opponent is in the corner so you can have a much higher chance of landing your attack. Feints, hand control, head control, probes, all of this becomes much more effective in the corner since your opponent has much less space to escape as a means of defense and Lopez did not show an ability to capitalize on this much. But most surprisingly, Lopez showed he doesn't have the ability to properly cut off the ring against the southpaw. Against the fighter who is continuously moving around the ring, like Ortiz was here, cutting off the ring is absolutely essential, and the key to doing it is establishing the dominant outside lead foot position. Let's take a look at this example. So we see Ortiz backing himself into a corner, and now he has to move laterally to escape. So we notice that Ortiz moves to his left to draw Lopez into that direction to cut him off. However, this is intentional because Ortiz is actually setting up an escape out the weak side angle or closed side, which is outside of Lopez's lead foot. So Ortiz baits Lopez into cutting off the ring. Lopez anticipates Ortiz to continue circling to his left, 
but Ortiz unexpectedly stops circling out the moment Lopez sets his lead foot down. This allows Ortiz to step around the lead foot and escape out the weak side angle. You see, when cutting off the ring in an open stance match, you don't want to surrender lead foot dominance when cutting the ring towards the open side. You leave the escape route on the weak side open. The conventional way to cut off the ring is to maintain outside lead foot position to cut off the weak side escape route and allow the opponent to only move to the open side so you could try to hit them with the power rear hand. And this weak side escape route is something Manny Pacquiao would always do where he would invite his opponent to cut off the ring to the open side only to stop circling out once they set their lead foot down and he would step around the weak side oftentimes with a straight left hand and you're not able to cut off the ring on the southpaw you got to get that lead foot outside of his to corner him not allow him to get around to that outside and walk left towards that way to force him back right you want to move him towards your right hand and here we see Ortiz in the corner again, and Lopez steps in to launch an attack. But you notice that Lopez doesn't establish the dominant outside lead foot position, leaving the weak side escape route open. And so you notice Ortiz just dodges the punch and escapes out the only escape route on the weak side. And while Lopez did end up winning this fight officially, his best moments in the fight came when he would feint lunging in, only to counter the counter punch from Ortiz and also when he remains patient enough to allow Ortiz to attack first so that he could counter, preferably with his signature catch-and-shoot specialty. As mentioned, Teofimo Lopez did win this fight on the scorecards. However, until he cleans up some holes in his game against Southpaws, when it comes to lead hand fighting, cutting off the ring, and being patient enough to not lunge at his opponents, we may see more of his fights looking like how this one played out. Lopez is a fighter who does best against aggressive opponents, who will come at him and give him opportunities to use his quick reactions and hand speed to land devastating counters. And that's going to do it for this one. As always, thank you everybody for watching, and special thanks to my GOAT tier patrons, Jason Mahinen, Grant Gabriel, Albert Chen, Gossala Geza, Marshall Bott, Jesus Galindo, Tall Lane, Jal Stroll, Micaiah O'Sullivan, Nyan Valdez, as well as my channel members, Lucas Miller and Hot Pocket Maestro. You guys keep the channel going, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Thank you all for watching.